By now you've heard of the drugs, semi-glutide, Ozempic, Wolgovi. If you're like me, you probably thought, hmm, I wonder if I could try that medication. Breaking news for anyone looking to lose weight. A few days ago, the FDA approved the most effective weight loss medication to date. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Habiba Tunau and I am a medical doctor, US licensed medical doctor, but I also happen to be obese, technically, uh, with a BMI of over 30, and also have hypertension and a family history of diabetes. So I have definitely considered looking into these medications, not just as a medical provider, but as someone who might be interested in taking this medication. These medications that I'm talking about, like Ozempic and Wigovi, are called GLP, GLP-1 receptor agonists, and that stands for glucagon-like peptide. Uh, one receptor agonist. You have seen the celebrities, you've seen the pictures online, on television, people like, let me see, Mindy Callen, um, Mindy Callen, uh, you've seen her before and after. She has always been a plus size woman. Uh, there's also Aisha Curry. There's also so many celebrities out there, uh, the Kardashians, the different sisters, Kim, Chloe, you have seen there before and after and you've probably wondered what's going on. How come all of Hollywood suddenly seems to be getting skinny? And it's not just Hollywood. Also notice that there are regular people in our community that have taken these medications and it has seemed to work wonders for them. Hi, I'm Kaylin. That is me right there. And this is also me right there. This was February, 2022. This was September 2021. Kind of a big difference, right? Actually a 75 pound difference. How did I do it? Okay, let me tell you. Okay, but before I do, just a warning. I am not a doctor, a medical professional, a nutritionist. I'm not in the fitness industry in any way. Um, I'm a social media manager and I'm just sharing this information because I did lose 75 pounds in seven months with polycystic ovarian syndrome after having two babies. And um, I'm happy to answer questions, but this is not, Sound medical advice, always talk to your doctor. Kabish, here's the four things I did to go from that to that. One, intermittent fasting, the 816 method. Two, I took the prescription Mugovi, which helped control my appetite and hunger. Three, I had a weekly B12 shot administered at my doctor's office. And four, this is the most important one, and I know you're gonna really realize, but it's true. I was consistent. I stayed with it for seven months every day. And of course, there were days that I fell off and I messed up, but you know what? I didn't beat myself up, I just got back on, I kept going and I got results. Pretty cool. It basically helps your brain think that you're not always hungry and it helps your brain like want certain types of foods. Like I can't, I don't desire fried foods. It has to be fresh and if I do get fried foods, it's very little. Right, number one, no more food chatter. Your brain is silent. You don't think about your next meal all of a sudden. You're not constantly craving the next snack. You just aren't thinking about food anymore. It's a revelation. I started Ozempic before Kim K and here are my thoughts. I was on Ozempic for around seven months and I just got off about two months ago. If you are not familiar with Ozempic, it has been in the news lately and there's been a lot of controversy surrounding it because of the large amount of weight that the Kardashians have had since being on this medicine. Now, this medicine is normally used for people with type 2 diabetes to help them, um, but people are using it for weight loss. I know a lot of celebrities have been using it, and I used it. A few people that I know used it for weight loss um, just to help speed things up. Three, three. This has completely changed my approach to food. I'm still early days. I still feel that if I went off the medication right now, I probably would revert back to my old unhealthy eating habits. But on this medication, I am drawn to healthier foods. I don't really want the really sweet, calorie dense, greasy foods. I, I wanna eat more vegetables. I wanna eat more fruit in my diet. I'm craving healthier food, which I've never done naturally before. So why not me? Should I try it? What, should I consider this medication? Um, like many of you, my weight is a big concern. I 
obsess sometimes obsess over my weight and what I can do to get it under better control and of course also improve my health right my objective in this video is not to dissuade you from taking this medication and neither to encourage you to take this medication my objective simply is to present you with some very important uh, details and very important facts that I have learned um, and you can do with that information as you will and certainly discuss that with your medical provider. Let's just say you've been exercising and you just can't seem to lose weight or maybe, maybe like me, you just have not exercised enough or maybe you're really motivated to lose the weight but you just don't have the discipline or maybe you have uncontrolled high blood pressure or you have uncontrolled diabetes or maybe you have PCOS and you just really have um, these medical problems that make it a challenge for you to lose weight or maybe you're postmenopausal, gone through menopause and realized that despite eating smaller amounts you just seem to be gaining weight and you just can't seem to lose the weight as easily as you used to. Or maybe your weight is just so out of control that you've considered surgery, weight loss surgery, and maybe that's not an option for you personally or you just really don't want to go towards the surgery route. And now, look, we've got these drugs that can help you lose weight. It seems to be a great option. Again, there's so many people that are losing weight. Uh, clearly successfully so now you're considering asking your medical doctor or your primary care doctor or your endocrinologist about these injectable weight loss medications right so let's go through the different injectable medications that are out there for weight loss so there is the drug Sasenda or Saxenda which is a GLP-1 receptor agonist it acts like a naturally occurring hormone that helps you feel full or makes you feel like you no longer need to eat. And this is a daily injectable drug. The active ingredient in Saxenda is Lyra glutide. Another available drug for weight loss is semiglutide, which is branded as Wagovi. Hey y'all, let me give y'all some quick information about this wonderful weight loss drug, Wagovi, okay? Wagovi, keep that in mind, Wagovi. So Wagovi is FDA approved for weight loss, right? It's the only medication in its class that's approved for weight loss. Yes, we have Saxenda, but right now we're going to talk about Wagovi. FDA approved for weight loss. Wagovi is approved for weight loss. Got it? Got it. Okay, so how it works. So Wagovi is a GLP-1 agonist and it works by sending signals to the brain to tell us that, hey, you're full. You're not hungry. So even if you eat a small amount of food, the Wagovi will work to tell your brain that you've ate enough. That's how it curves our appetite and that's how it works for weight loss, okay? It is approved FDA for weight loss. Another wonderful thing about the Wagovi is that it's a weekly injection. This box has four pins. So once a week, every week, you inject yourself at the same day. Doesn't have to be the same time, just the same day. Another wonderful thing about the Wagovi is that it curves your appetite and that when you lose the weight, as long as you remain on the Wagovi, the weight stays off. Um, either Wagovi or Azembic. So the active ingredient is semi-glutide. So one of the newest uh, weight loss medications out there is uh, semaglutide. Uh, it's actually been around for a while. It was FDA approved initially uh, for diabetes management. Uh, when they do the studies, they actually found that patients were losing uh, amazing amounts of weight on it. Uh, I believe last year it got FDA approval specifically for weight loss. Uh, its brand name is Wegovi, but we use it in the office as semaglutide. So one of the things I love about semaglutide is how it's delivered and how it's taken. Uh, for convenience sake, it's actually a once a week medication. Uh, most patients hate when I tell them it's actually an injection, uh, but it's a tiny little insulin injection uh, that's done subcutaneously usually around the belly area uh, again once a week really convenient I want to show patients how to do the injection in the office they're like I got this I can do this at home easily 
So typically in the studies, what they saw was patients were losing about 20% of their body weight, uh, which while that does not sound a lot, it actually can be a lot of weight uh, in a six to eight month span of time. Uh, typically what we're seeing in the office is anywhere between uh, 10 to 20% of body weight loss in three to four months time, uh, really depending on what else the patients are doing. Uh, it goes a long, long way in helping them modify their diets, but if patients are starting to exercise and things like that, you start to see a much, much bigger weight loss. So many people consider semaglutide the clear winner when it comes to the amount of weight loss that you can expect. It is a clearly very powerful drug that was initially designed for diabetes and the side effect was noted to be weight loss and now it is FDA approved for weight loss. What the pen looks like. Okay, so I like to have you pull off the pen. So go ahead and pull that off. Okay, easy, right? Now all of your needles are going to be in here. Okay. It's going to be once a week. So what you're going to do, open this up, mm -hmm. just like that. You're going to take out one of these. Okay. Once you take one of these, you can take this tab off right here, like that. Okay. okay. And then you're going to screw it on here. So go ahead and screw it on here. So take that and then put it on, screw it on. Got it? Yeah. All right. Once you screw it on, mm -hmm. now it's screwed on tight, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Take so the first tap off. Just pull it, pull it off, oh, yeah? okay. And then that's not a needle, so take that off. And then that's a needle, okay? okay? So this small little needle mm -hmm. is gonna help you lose weight. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna have you crank this. It's gonna go just like this. Okay. Boom, 0 0.25. You saw okay. how I did that? Yes. Okay, once we do that, we're gonna find an area of fat. Okay, clean it off, mm -hmm. just like this. And we have the 0 0.25, three, two, one. Did that hurt? No. Not at all? No. That's it, okay? I seriously was like, is this really gonna do anything? <laughs> but everybody loses weight, it's yeah. crazy. Then there is Ozempic, which is a weekly injection, and the active ingredient is semi-glutide or semi-glutide, and the doses vary, so the dose may usually start at 0.25 milligrams weekly, and that allows the body to get used to the drug and some of the side effects, which will cover weekly to the arm or to the thigh or to the abdomen, to the stomach area. And the dose will then be titrated up um, usually to 0.5 milligrams after about four weeks. And then the maximum dose is one milligram uh, per week over time. So everyone's dose is going to vary depending on how they tolerate it but again usually the starting dose is 0.25 milligrams injected once a week update doctor double my dose i've lost 40 pounds i don't feel i have excuse the fat I'd probably see results if I didn't eat like poo. And then another drug available is Munjara, which is designed for diabetics, but also causes significant weight loss. And that is also a once a week injection. There are a lot of pros to it. However, while you're taking these medications, you have to adhere to a strict diet in order for it to be effective. So for example, you are strongly advised to avoid sweets. So such as sodas, uh, biscuits, cakes, ice cream, all of that you need to avoid while taking this medication. You also need to avoid energy drinks. You need to avoid alcohol, chocolate, you know, concentrated sweets while taking this medication. So you really do have to, you know, change your lifestyle significantly if you were not used to eating healthy before. And I'm sure if you have been on social media or the internet, you have seen tons and tons of testimonies of people who have lost weight and swear by it and um, share how much weight loss has changed their lives 
or has improved their confidence or just has changed their relationship with food. So clearly these medications work. They are definitely, I am not arguing the fact that they are definitely effective when it comes to weight loss because you're literally forced to eat very small amounts of food because you are constantly feeling full and you, for some people, they actually almost have an aversion to food while taking the medication and they can only eat small, tiny amounts of food at a time. However, just that little like couple of bites of that meat I feel like literally like I have um, I will say that um, I don't the only full meal that I can eat is a salad like I can eat a full salad but I can't mm, that's that's a lie I can't eat a full salad it's basically all I can eat it is a mozzarella classic chicken sandwich meal from Wendy's and I just got it without the bun but this is as much as I can eat which as you can see is probably not even half and then I didn't even eat the fries like I literally feel like I have to throw up just eating that meat because I had no business eating that. I should have just got a salad. But I'm very thankful for this um, medicine. It helped me. Um, I probably would have lost more weight if I drank more water. But but we're going to work on it. This is marking three weeks on tomorrow on semaglutide. I started off at 231.2 or 232.2. I am 218 today. They don't get that sensation of feeling hungry and craving food like they normally would. So that, I guess, sounds like a godsend in many ways, doesn't it? So now let's discuss the cons. And there are a ton of cons and side effects and serious risks that you're taking by taking these medications, some of which I don't feel are covered enough in the media. All right, here are some of the common side effects from taking these GLP-1 uh, receptor agonists. And I have a list here because I don't want to forget them. Injection site reactions, headaches, hypoglycemia, dizziness, diarrhea, fatigue, burping, excessive gas, abdominal pain, and the abdominal pain can be quite significant during that first week of taking the medication. So can the diarrhea and dizziness, um, fat loss along with muscle loss, hair loss, rebound weight gain. Now, let's see. For each of those, I'm going to discuss some of the things that people have done or is recommended that you do to help alleviate some of those symptoms. And then we'll talk about some of the serious, more serious risks because these aren't it. <laughs> There's some more serious risk involved with taking these medications. All right. So let's say you have injection site reaction. One thing you can do if it's not severe is apply some topical Benadryl to it. That might help and you can get that at your drugstore. But again, please discuss your side effects also with your provider before trying to treat yourself. All right. Now, let's say you have significant constipation. Oh, I didn't even mention constipation is a major side effect to some of these drugs. Constipation. So it may suggest that you're not taking in enough fluids and that you might need to increase your fiber intake. But for some people, even when they do, they still have a significant amount of constipation because keep in mind the medication is slowing down um, your gut. It's slowing down how fast the food goes through your gut or through your intestines, which is why you tend to feel full all the time or full most of the time, right? Okay. Then there is also the dizziness. Sometimes the dizziness is uh, associated with having low blood pressure or lower blood pressure because you're not consuming enough. Um, you know, you're not drinking enough. So the point of the story is I'm done with Ozempic. It's caused me enough problems. The 20 pounds was not at all worth this, not worth my health. I don't want to, I'm not dying to be skinny, which is what I was doing. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, I'm done with it. I don't recommend it. It's, it's rough. Like I'm terrified of the problems that it has caused me and I can't wait till this dose finally wears off. Because it keeps dragging my blood sugar down so low that I, it's causing me to go into full-on anxiety attacks with my high blood pressure, high heart rate. And it's just, 
I'm so scared. There's also fatigue. Significant fatigue appears to be one of the major side effects to taking this drug, especially again during the first week or first two weeks until your body gets used to the medication. For some people, they will continue to have this um, side effect while taking it. But again, for the most part, it appears to be during the first week or so. So the fatigue can come on because of the medication itself. But if it appears to be consistent um, over or past the first week, it might also be because you're not taking in enough protein. And when you have a protein deficiency, a lot of times you can have B12 deficiency because the B12 comes from protein, right? So protein like eggs, fish, meat uh, provides us with B12. And if you have a deficiency, you'll tend to have um, fatigue. So you might need to get that checked. Ask your provider to check your B12 level and also you might need to supplement with B12 orally or by injection. Burping, excessive gas, abdominal pain. In some severe cases you can actually get gastroparesis which is the fact that your intestines have kind of gone to sleep and now food isn't passing through or you're not digesting the food and people can have severe nausea and vomiting as a result of that that is definitely something very serious that you need to discuss with your provider or might actually result in you having to go to the emergency room if you're having significant nausea or vomiting. And in some instances, you may have to come off the medication if your nausea or vomiting is very severe. So biggest side effect of semaglutide is nausea. Uh, one of the ways we tend to curb this is by starting on a much, much lower dose. And if patients are tolerating that dose, we start to go up a little bit more. Uh, one of the formulations that we actually use contains B6, which really, really helps with nausea and nausea control. But nausea is the big one. But beyond that, it's tolerated really, really well. Okay, um, not to be all mopey about it, but um, it's a side effect of Manjaro. It's a severe side effect that can worsen and um, not a lot of people get it. Basically what I'm talking about is um, my heart rate's been very, very fast. I talked about it in my last video about taking Manjaro. If you, this is on your free page for no reason, hi, I'm Juliana, I'm 25 years old, type 2 diabetic, and I was documenting my journey on taking a once a week injectable medication called Mount Jaro, and it's been a miracle lifesaver for me. I, my numbers have never been better in my entire life since being a diabetic, um, I eat like half what I used to eat and I feel full and it's helped me lose weight and when it was r nearly impossible for me to lose weight beforehand and um, now I have to stop it <laughs> and it's just really disappointing because there are so many people where it's helped their heart rate and they've never felt better on it and they can continue it and it's it's changing the world this medication whether you're a diabetic or not i mean people are losing weight who've never been able to before and it's improving so many diabetics lives and i can't take it anymore so it's a side effect of glp1s which is a drug family so that's Jaro, ozempic trulicity we go v things like that and I can't and I know that I'm crying and it's probably melodramatic but this past month has been the best month ever and I just feel so much better but when my heart rate goes up to 192 when I'm walking on an incline that's not normal and when it goes up 30 beats per minute to 133 beats per minute just from sitting to standing I can't risk that so I guess you can take this as a warning um if you are on Mount Jaro and your heart rate's faster than normal, please go get checked up by your doctor. It's not 
worth continuing to take it, even if you lose weight. I mean, I lost 21 pounds in a month. It's just not worth it. One side effect that is unwanted from semaglutide that's happening to me is I am belching excessively. Like every time I eat, I have belches after and it's gross. Nobody wants to burp this much. And I'm going to tell you that although I don't have like the side effects of upset stomach or diarrhea or constipation or any of those types of side effects that I was warned about, I am still having the fatigue. I don't have a headache anymore. My first day on it, I did have a headache. I think that was a sugar detox headache, but the belching has got to go. <laughs> I'm ready for that to stop. I don't know what's up with it, but after I eat, I belch like five times. So disgusting. So three of the most common side effects, and doesn't mean you're going to have these, but uh, number one, be nausea. Two would be acid reflux. And number three would be constipation. One main Manjaro side effect that I haven't heard anybody else talking about. I'm new here, so be nice. Maybe you guys are talking about it and I just haven't caught into that wind yet. But my friends, my blood pressure, is anybody else experiencing what feels like low blood pressure on a GLP-1 medication? Um, I am at about eight weeks on Manjaro and it doesn't happen every day. It seems to be just those first couple of days after the injection. But what I've noticed is like if I get up in the middle of the night, say if I have to get up to go to the bathroom or whatever, I get a little bit like dizzy, minor, minor lightheadedness. But especially like the first half of the day, it feels like very low energy, especially if I take like a piping hot shower. I usually do a hot shower followed by the cold at the end. And it's an adjustment. Um, so basically what I'm doing is increasing my electrolytes, especially the sodium intake and just seeing how that lands. But I'm just curious if you felt this too, let me know. Hey, I'm officially one month on Wagobi. Okay, in today's move up day, it will be 0.5. I'll be moving up to a little nervous, trusting my provider and all the information I read online to prepare myself. But if you have any tips on um, any suggestions, any anything, drop them below so I could try to ease my fears and, you know, the tips, maybe they'll help. I mean, for the most part, I've been dealing with just random days of fatigue, random days of nausea, random days of heartburn, but nothing very um, impactful, very minimal, except that one day that I mentioned where I had to take the Zofran. I did have a few bouts of insomnia, but a teeny, 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 tiny dose of melatonin wiped that away. So again, um, as for the constipation, I've been on it with my magnesium, so no issues there. And just staying fully hydrated and doing all I need to. My labs look well, so I'm really excited to see where it uh, takes me next. So as for um, my measurements, I measured myself off camera, obviously, and I am down seven inches total, which is great. I think like four of them are in my stomach alone, so waste come through, okay? Um, as for weight, I am down 10 pounds, but I do not have a photo of it today. Hello, GLP-1 community. I wanted to hop on here and talk for just a couple minutes about a severe side effect that I had that um, almost made me quit taking Manjaro. And it's not a side effect that's most common for sure, but I just wanted you to be aware that if this is something that you experience, that you're not the only one and you're not crazy. So everybody talks about the nausea, the constipation, the diarrhea, the sulfur burps, and the acid reflux, right? But the symptom that I had that nearly caused me to stop taking this medication is something called allodynia, A-L-L-O-D-Y-N-I-A. And I didn't even know that word, honestly, um, before another TikToker uh, mentioned it. But basically, um, it is a painful reaction to something that should not cause a painful reaction so it is it's like just touching my skin like this um, was severely painful and it happened on my hands mostly on top of my hands top of my feet my forearms and my lower legs and sometimes my thigh and my neck just finished week one on Ozempic now it's time to take my second dose at point two five milligrams let's go so first week side effects nausea <laughs> vomiting <laughs> migraine um loss of appetite all like all of the side effects you could get i got my very first week um but i did the shot in my stomach this time i'm gonna do it in my thigh so hopefully there's gonna be a change a good change Less, less side effects, if you will. 
All right, I had to change up the angle for you. <laughs> In the thigh. Hopefully you can see this. If not, oh well. Here we go. This is fat, right? Yeah. Okay, in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Painless. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Did I get jitters on semaglutide? No. Did I get anxiety on semaglutide? Um, hell yeah, I did. But I've suffered from anxiety since, probably since birth. I am not saying do not try semaglutide. I think it is a fabulous medicine. It's a game changer for obesity. This is, this is the real deal, you guys. However, it's not for everybody. If you are predisposed for anxiety or depression, you need to tell your doctor about this before you get prescribed. There are tons of reports of people's anxiety and depression getting worse on this medication. Do your research, test it out, tell your doctor if you fear that you might have anxiety. Sometimes being skinny is not worth being sad. Do your research. Another side effect that I mentioned earlier is hair loss for some people and the hair loss can come when you lose significant amounts of weight in a short period of time and you are not supplementing with sufficient nutrients, especially protein. So I'm sure you've seen people who have had surgery who uh, may suffer from significant hair loss and that has a lot to do with protein deficiency, B12 deficiency, and just not getting enough nutrients. They're literally, in some instances, starving um, and not getting enough nutrients, and so that results in hair loss. Is hair loss a side effect of GLP-1 medications like Manjaro, Ozempic, Wagovi, etc.? The answer is actually no. Hair loss is not specific to these drugs. However, hair loss is a side effect of weight loss, rapid and or substantial weight loss. So is it possible that you will experience hair loss while taking these medications yes but that's because of the weight loss the way to help is to make sure you're consuming enough protein while you're losing weight uh, to get that number of what you should be eating uh, you could speak with a nutritionist or your provider did you want to lose weight but now you're losing your hair ah this is for you let's talk about the good news first hair loss on a weight loss journey is totally normal happens to a lot of us happened to me and it grows back what my doctor shared with me is it's usually a result of protein deficiency nutrition deficiency the stress on your body from losing weight maybe you're not bringing in enough nutrients through food choices you are starting to struggle with hair loss or want to prevent hair loss here are three things that you can do one make sure you're getting enough protein if you eat mostly plant-based or vegetarian like me i call myself a weirditarian that can be another TikTok for another day. One of the things that I started doing was incorporating pea protein powder into my daily smoothie when I would break my intermittent fasting fast at noon every day. Two, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're eating nutrient-rich foods, and at the very least that you are taking your vitamins. GLP-1 medications, of course, make us not hungry. They turn off the food noise, and it can make it very easy to skip meals, forget meals, and not be good about your nutrition. So what if for some reason you've decided to come off these weight loss medications? Will you gain the weight back? What if for whatever reason you have to come off the medication because you're having too many side effects? Or what if you've reached your target weight loss um, and you decide that you no longer wish to be on this medication for the rest of your life? Or what if you're having insurance issues? Because as you know, this medication is very expensive, right? What if you can no longer afford the medication and that's the reason why you had to stop? So I'm gonna be 100% transparent. I have been on Manjaro since August of 2022 and that medication changed my life. I was on it um, initially because I saw it for weight loss, but I do have insulin resistance and that medication not only helped me regulate all my hormones, but it also helped my mental health. It helped me not have a panic attack. <laughs> I've never not had panic attacks and I haven't had my medicine. This is the third dose that I've missed since. Uh, they denied my coupon anymore 
and I don't have $1,500 to pay for Monjaro. And this is not me asking for money. I just need to know what to do. Or you just have some access issues and you just can't seem to get the medication that you need. Will you gain the weight back? That's the question. Many providers or many doctors uh, and scientists feel that obesity is a chronic disease and that like any chronic disease like diabetes or hypertension, you wouldn't just stop taking your medication uh, because your sugar is now, you know, okay today or that your blood pressure is okay today you wouldn't just stop taking your medication right so they believe that obesity being a chronic disease needs you to continue to take the medication but honestly there are instances where for example if you were not always a big person or maybe you gained a few pounds and you were not always obese most of your life by taking this medication, you've lost it, you've reached your goal, you might be able to stop. And if you continue those healthy lifestyle habits, you may not regain the weight again, just because you quit taking the medicine. So just a little update about Wagovi. Um, I have not been on it for a little over 60 days and I haven't gained not one pound, not one pound back. Um, even though my appetite increased just slightly, since being off of it um, i still don't have my craving for sweets and again i've maintained the weight with uh, very little change so hope that helps at a minimum it is advised that if you are going to stop the medication that the medication needs to be tapered off it should not just be abruptly stopped so the dose needs to be lowered gradually. Don't go cold turkey if you're on Ozempic, Wegovy, or semaglutide. If you abruptly stop this drug altogether, if you've been on it for a series of months, this is where people are gaining their weight back. It's extremely important that you put together a titration program. A titration program means that you are slowly going to come off of this drug over a series of weeks. The reason for this and the importance of this is it allows for you to get back to feeling like your normal self your appetite's slowly going to come back your metabolism is slowly going to slow back down to its normal rate and now it's up to you in the lifestyle changes that you've made about fitness and diet to guide you into the new stage of your life you've lost all this weight so it's up to you to keep it off but if however you were the type of person that has been morbidly obese for most of your life and you stop the medication and then go back to the unhealthy lifestyle or food choices that you were eating before, uh, then it is likely that just because you've lost some weight, once you quit taking the medication, you will likely regain most of it or all of it back again. So according to Dr. Sithu Reddy, president of the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, this is a common and expected effect. So in essence, that rebound effect or rebound weight gain is quote, common and expected. The effects of GLP-1 analogs are not permanent. And if therapy is discontinued, their therapeutic effects dissipate. This is what Dr. Reddy told Healthline. Theoretically, these medications will be taken for several years. So bottom line is this is a long-term commitment for most people who choose to take this injectable uh, weight loss medication. So next let's talk about who should not take these weight loss medications or this category of weight loss medications. Who should not take it? Number one, people with a family history or history of medullary thyroid cancer. So this is not a common cancer and there are other types of thyroid cancer, but those specifically with a family history of medullary thyroid cancer. I've been a doctor for 13 years and this is what you need to know about these weight loss medications. A lot of people are taking these and getting great results as far as weight loss goes, but they did find in animals that it could potentially cause thyroid cancer. So just know and make sure you understand the risks before you jump into taking a medication. For myself personally, I would rather focus on my lifestyle choices rather than these medications. Always be sure you research the medications that you're prescribed because too many Americans do 
do get side effects from these array of prescriptions. Also, those with MEN or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome. Anyone with a history of pancreatitis should also not take this medication. So any history of pancreatitis. And pancreatitis is a very serious and painful condition where you will get abdominal pain. You might get nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain that radiates into the back. Hey guys, it's me. I just wanted to um, talk to you about the, some side effects of semaglutide. So I was on Ozempic. I was loving it. I lost 15 pounds. It was great. Um, I was going to continue to do the shots. Um, and then I got this really, really sore throat and a big lump in my throat. I thought my throat was closing off. So I went to the emergency room and I thought I had strep throat. Turns out that's a side effect of Ozempic. Um, you can actually get thyroid cancer from it. Um, I've had this sore, scratchy throat and no voice for three weeks now. I actually ended up in the hospital for three days because it also caused pancreatitis. So I wanted to let people know if you get a sore throat at all or you get pain under your ribs, it's actually an emergency and it's a side effect of semaglutide or um, Ozempic. Um, I know they talk a lot about the weight loss because it's so great, but no one talks about the side effects and I just thought that was really important. Anyone with diabetic eye disease or serious diabetic eye disease. What's interesting to me is that on the packages of these weight loss medications, they do not mention the risk of pancreatic cancer because that is one thing that I am also very concerned about. Okay, so to put things in better perspective, let's talk about Victoza. So Victoza was a uh, drug used to treat diabetes. The active ingredient in Victoza is liraglutide. Does that sound familiar? Liraglutide, that's the same active ingredient as the drug Saxenda, which is currently being used in weight loss, the one that is a daily injectable. So why is this of interest? Why is Victoza of interest or how does it relate to these other drugs? Victoza is the subject of numerous cancer injury lawsuits related to pancreatic cancer. So again, Victoza is the subject of numerous cancer injury lawsuits related to pancreatic cancer. It contains the same ingredient, liraglutide, as Saxenda, one of the currently used GLP-1 receptor agonists. Keep in mind that Saxenda does come with a black box warning. Um, it does come with a black box warning, which is the highest level of warning by the FDA. The label warns of the risk of thyroid cancer and the risk of acute pancreatitis. However, there is no mention of pancreatic cancer or the risk of pancreatic cancer on the box. Now, I found this very interesting because I thought, well, if Saxenda has the same or active ingredient as Victoza, which caused pancreatic cancer in so many people, if that same ingredient is in Victoza, is also in Saxenda, how come it's not mentioned on the box? Why is this not, you know, obvious that this could be a potential risk? And what I read is that apparently no one knows if Saxenda causes pancreatic cancer. According to the FDA, based on animal studies, uh, they felt that there was no association. Basically, uh, that the data does not support a causate, causative association, meaning that they do not feel that the data that they have, um, that there's a cause and effect or cause and relationship between um, the medication and uh, the disease, in this case, pancreatic cancer. Now, I know this is an unpopular opinion from a physician, but I just have to be honest, okay? It's fact that the FDA in the past has made mistakes when it comes to finding the relationship between certain diseases and certain medications. And so it causes you to wonder if there has been just a race to profit. You know, is this, can you imagine the amount of money the pharmaceutical companies stand to make as these drugs continue to be promoted? Because obviously, obesity is a huge problem in the United States. And so can you imagine that we now have drugs that can completely eliminate or at least 
um, help manage obesity? Can you manage the amount of money that these pharmaceuticals stand to make? My concern is have these drugs been studied long enough to see the clear risks and side effects um, instead of just focusing on the efficacy? Yes, you will lose weight if you take these medications, but at what cost? At what cost to the public? At what cost to your body? At what cost to you? And I don't think all of the scientists, I don't think all of the doctors know the answer quite yet. I think most people are optimistic that these drugs, they do have side effects, but that they are safe enough uh, to take. Um, and that there are so many examples of people who have lost weight successfully and continue to maintain the weight loss. So what do you think? If you are obese or if you are struggling with your weight or you are merely overweight, would you be willing to try one of these drugs? Or do you already know someone that is taking these drugs and how are they doing? Or again, have you yourself taken these drugs? How are you doing on this medication? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure there are a lot of people that would like to um, read your responses. I myself am honestly on the fence about whether I would take uh, one of these GLP-1 agonists. I have gone back and forth, looked at the side effects, looked at the pros, looked at the cons. I've been practicing medicine for now for 40 years and I've learned through all my experience that quick fixes are generally not the answer to long-term problems. The biggest problem with Ozempic is the GI complaints, which are nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. 10 to 50% of people that are on those drugs have a severe nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, and they have to stop the drugs for that reason. But people don't also talk about the increased risk for pancreatitis and also gallbladder disease that can sometimes occur with these drugs. Once they stop the drug, the majority of people that are taking it end up gaining back the weight that they just worked so hard to lose. Our biggest concern here at Canyon Ranch is that people think that that's the answer to treat people that are overweight. It's always about all kinds of lifestyle changes that you need to do to get yourself to a healthy weight because that healthy weight is going to put you in a much better state and decreasing your risk for chronic disease. I know that I would feel so much better in my own body if I were um, 20, 30 pounds lighter and yet I cannot seem to get myself to want to even consider the medication. Again, my point for making this video is not to convince you not to take it and it's certainly not to convince you to take it. I hope the information I have presented has been um, helpful or at least educational or at least giving you food for thought, something you might want to discuss with your doctor at your next appointment and definitely do your own research and fact check everything I have said. Um, but for now, personally, I think I'm just going to continue to cut back on my calories to become a little bit more disciplined when it comes to my own uh, uh, lifestyle and uh, food choices, to eat less uh, processed food, to eat more fruits and vegetables, to try to incorporate more exercise in my uh, routine, and also to try to include more healthy supplements like ginger and apple cider vinegar. I will also continue to try to get more sleep because it is a fat. Uh, when you are sleep deprived, it is really hard for you to lose weight. You continue to maintain high levels of cortisol, which counteract the effects of weight loss. So you want to get to a point where you are getting enough rest so your body can continue to repair and so you can also continue to successfully lose weight. And also importantly, trying to eat an adequate amount of protein because it's very important, especially as women, as we get older, we tend to start losing muscle mass and it's very important to maintain that muscle mass by eating adequate amounts of protein, but also by incorpor incorporating some weight lifting if possible. For now, that's what I'm going to continue to do or try to do. So that's just my point of view. And again, feel, feel free to disagree. I am actually very curious what you think. So thank you again for listening. Bye. See you later.